everyone, welcome back to the Guidebook of the Week series. Uh, this week we are going to see an example related to assembly. Now I know we've got another, uh, or even another couple of videos uh, regarding assembly, but uh, this time we are going to use a different media. Uh, often companies that do design or have uh, engineering teams launching new products, maybe contract manufacturers, uh, they often need to create instructions but the product's never really been built before on the shop floor. So in that case, uh, you can result to using your 3D models to build your uh, instructions or even drawings, maybe. Uh, VCAS can still let you use that type of media uh, by taking screen captures of those. You don't need uh, to always use pictures taken from the point of view of the operator on the shop floor or even videos. So let's look at that in a bit more uh, detail. All right, so this example is called a 3D model. We're going to do a hammer drill handle assembly. Uh, so let's start here. I'm going to create a new job. I'm just going to match it first with a work order number. Uh, and then we are ready to go. Now, this first step is already a bit different. It's actually a GIF. So yes, you can use animations on your steps if you want. And it doesn't have to be that full step that is a GIF. If you want, it could be maybe uh, you've got a picture step where you see some kind of electrical panel. Well, in the bottom corner in a square, you could have an animation of somebody pressing a lever, turning a knob, pressing some buttons. Um, so yeah, you can use it to add a little bit of detail where you wouldn't necessarily want a full on video to start playing. Uh, we can already see bottom corner here uh, in the data section, it tells us which drawing is used for this build. At any point in time, we can access the bill of material. This list can even come straight from your ERP software if you want. So then it's custom to the actual work order you are doing. Uh, top right, as usual, we can see our productivity information. Uh, and then we've got a couple of elements on the side. Some of those forms we've already seen in other examples. I'm not going to go in there uh, in detail, uh, but still keep in mind those forms can be uh, actual shared forms, which is forms that you build. It takes you a couple of minutes and then they can automatically be added to all your instructions at once. Uh, we also have a small attachment on the side, essentially showing the original uh, drawing document. Uh, so I'm just going to go through those steps. Uh, it should be fairly quick since most of the elements, again, we've already seen. What I want to show is how to build an example using our models. So moving through, I've got a first form here that opens up, just asking me for some confirmation on my build, making sure my work setup's fine, making sure my tooling is okay. And again, this form will be time stamped and I have a copy of it essentially in my production report. So I better make sure everything is okay. Uh, second step, this one has multiple images over some kind of blank background because your step can be a collage of different images. It doesn't need to be one step, one image. Uh, pretty useful to show the parts that you will need uh, where then you can have an actual image instead of referring all, always to uh, the bomb list. Uh, so just moving through here, uh, I'm just going to point out real quick that if you do have some smart torque tools on your shop floor, they can be used to interact directly with VKS. So if you arrive on the step like this asking you to apply a certain torque, you can use your torque tool and the torque tool can dictate to VKS if the torque detected is within specification or not. And not only will tell the operator if his spec is okay or not, it will actually log the torque and angle value in your report. So at the end of your assembly, you're gonna get all the torques of all the bolts and screws including their angle values and even information on the actual tool that was used for this job. It will all be listed there so then you can make sure uh, that your bill respects all the certifications that you need. Uh, again, just moving through quickly here. Uh, if for you it's very important to show a certain sequence of build, you can use those operation droplets here uh, where as you move through they will blink one after uh, another which can also be used to display the torque that is actually required on the side here and even the part number um, that you need to insert. Here we've got our standard form asking us for some traceability on this step. So we're adding a subcomponent. So in this case, we want to have a trace of which component was used in this uh, final assembly. So then if we scan that information, we are going to match it with this build. 
some new parts to assemble. So I'm, again, I'm showing here the new parts we're going to need for the following steps. Instead of just showing all the necessary uh, parts at the beginning, I prefer showing them um, as, uh, as you go, essentially. And finally, the last step. So as you see, pretty simple, pretty easy to understand what needs to be done. This is uh, an assembly process that is quite uh, simple for sure. Uh, if you do have some more complex step later on, once you are actually having this product being built on the shop floor, don't hesitate to go there, take some videos, take some pictures, create a new revision, uh, modify your actual example, switch those 3D drawing steps by pictures and the videos you've just taken. Uh, the goal here is continuous improvement. You should always have your instructions uh, get revisioned and updated as you go. Uh, so that's it for the guidebook of the week. I hope you learned a lot and uh, we'll see each other again pretty soon.